Hi, I'm Kyra, and I'm here to guide you through this geometry and measurement unit to prepare you for the geometry problems on the SAT. In this lesson, we'll go over strategies for the geometry questions. The main focus will be drawing and labeling figures in order to make educated guesses. Let's begin by taking a look at an example together. The area of a triangle is equal to the area of a square. If one side of the square is 4 and the height of the triangle is 8, what is the base of the triangle? Our answer choices are A, 2, B, 4, C, 6, and D, 8. Let's underline the facts, circle the key words, label the answer choices, and get to work. Since we have a geometry problem and no picture, we want to start by drawing a picture. In this case, we need a square and a triangle. The information we have is that one side of the square is 4 and that the height of the triangle is 8. We're also told that the area of our square is equal to the area of our triangle. Recalling that the formula for the area of a square is side squared, we can plug in the numbers for our square. So 4 squared, or 16, is the area of our square. The question states that the areas of these figures are equal. This means that the area of our triangle is also 16. The area of a triangle, which is given in the formulas box at the beginning of the test, is 1 half times the base times the height. We can plug in 16 for the area and 8 for the height. So we have 16 equals 1 half times the base times 8. Multiplying 1 half and 8 gives us 16 equals 4 times the base. If we solve for the base by dividing by 4, we get that our base is equal to 4. Looking back at our answer choices, we see that answer choice B is 4. Circle it because you now know it's the right answer. Whether you're given a picture or you've drawn your own, there's another strategy that can help you get to the answer even if you don't know the exact calculations needed for the problem. I'm talking about guesstimating. I'm going to show you how you can use your pencil to estimate the length of different parts of a figure and make an educated guess of the length of a side based on known information. Let's go through an example together. What is the measurement of the unknown side? Our answer choices are A, 10, B, 15, C, 20, and D, 26. The picture tells us that the hypotenuse, or the longest side of the triangle, is 25, and that one of the legs is 15. So we need to find the third side of this triangle, X. Let's say we've completely forgotten the Pythagorean theorem. It happens. Here's where guesstimating comes in. First, we use our pencil to measure the two known sides. Measure the side that's labeled as 15 by lining up the tip of your pencil with one vertex and your fingers with the other vertex. Don't move the placement of your fingers on the pencil as you carry over the measurement. Now, compare this measurement to the unknown side by simply lifting your pencil and lining up the point of your pencil with the vertex of the unknown side. Notice that the side is longer than the one you just measured. So x is greater than 15. Now measure the side that's labeled as 25 in just the same way. Again, compare this measurement with the unknown side. The side is actually shorter than the side of 25 that we just measured. So even though we don't know exactly what the third side is, we do know that it's greater than 15, but smaller than 25. Looking at our answer choices, we can get rid of anything that isn't in that range. Answer choice A, 10, is less than our lower number, so we can eliminate that. Answer choice B is exactly 15, instead of between 15 and 25, so we can cross that one out as well. Answer choice C is 20, which is directly between our two numbers. Let's hang on to this one. Finally, answer choice D, 26, is just above our limit. Cross it out. By carefully guesstimating, we were able to get rid of all the answer choices except C, and we can safely choose it as the correct answer. Guesstimating is a great option if you have no idea how to solve a problem. But remember, you can only guesstimate if a figure is drawn to scale. 
If you see the words not drawn to scale, don't guesstimate. And if you know the necessary formulas and calculations, by all means, use those first. You'll have a lot of opportunities to apply the strategies of guesstimating and drawing pictures as you continue to be a future SAT champion. Make sure you practice a few of the hundreds of problems available throughout this course.